the, the Kathy, tell us about the G7 Research Group out of the Monk School. It, it's, it's an organization that started with Professor Curtin, who is a political economist professor at U of T, and in fact he was my professor back in the 1980s. In 1988, Toronto was the host for the Canadian G7 summit at that time. It was before, of course, Russia joined when Gorbachev was, um, was president. What Professor Curtin has done is he designed models with Ella Kokotsis, who is a PhD, and she designed a model that is a compliance figure. It, it looks at all of the G7 commitments that they make collectively and, and then looks at whether they are and rates them as to whether they are complied with. So it's interesting as an international phenomena how's the G, how the G7 has progressed and we can look back to 1988 to see what kinds of economic and political conditions were in place that gave rise to compliance of these various issues that overlap states. Paul Martin, Prime Minister of Canada, who actually when he was our former Prime Minister of Canada, I'm sorry, we'd have to edit that part, but when he was the Finance Minister, he saw the world going forward and recognized that the G8, by this time Russia was a member, was far too clubby. Western democracies, but they had those common values. They were all democracies and of course had capitalistic economies and they traded amongst each amongst each other they had more social issues that they were concerned with that crossed borders it was Paul Martin that recognized that there was a large economic cohort which was coming on which by interesting now are the BRICS so he saw that we were going to be left out of the changing global economy. So he started meeting with the G20 group of finance ministers. He, he was part of the group that created that, right? He started it. He contacted Larry Summers, who then was Treasury Secretary, but I do believe he had left by that time. Or was, was he in Bill Clinton's administration at that time, I do believe he had left and he was back at Harvard. But he did contact Larry Summers and had said, I think that we have to be a little more inclusive. We have to include Africa, South Korea, the various economies with large, large populations, Indonesia, South Africa, that that surrounded, in fact, the G7, G8 countries. And that's how this started. So what had happened is there was already a familiarity among the various um, foreign ministers by this time and finance ministers had been meeting. So when the economic collapse happened in 2008, they could immediately put together the G20 countries and they called an emergency meeting in Washington, D.C. in, it was September 2008, and George Bush was still president at that time. So he presided, he was the host, ironically, uh, the host of the first G20 meeting. The finance ministers and the central bankers had all been meeting for 10 years by this point. Mark Carney was, our, was the governor of the Bank of Canada. He was instrumental in finding a solution to the economic collapse at that time by calming markets and lowering interest rates and suggesting that they lower interest rates at the same time, at the very same moment, because of, of, course, because of course, time differences around the world. It also gave the world, or the capital markets around the world, the sanctuary that they knew that 80% of the world's economy was working together in concert. Right. So, so the research our group, group yeah, looks sorry, at ahead. compliance actually. We attend the summits, we, we meet, we go to press conferences, and then we decide on 35 commitments from the communique and we follow up and we publish a report every year.
and the governments look at it and they measure themselves and as are you well. all Canadian or are you, are you from the, all no, the countries? No, we have our Russian um, from mm -hmm. the Moscow School of Higher Learning. We have people, we have university students in Paris or throughout France and Italy as well. Their think tanks were involved with. So it's quite extensive. What's very interesting is the, the group of seven, now that it's back to the group of seven because Russia is no longer a member in good standing, and the group of 20, they do not have a secretariat. Mm. So there is no accountability except to their own countries. So, or to each other, and there's no watchdog, for example. So it's Professor Curtin who created this and, and the compliance model as well. And now it is being overtaken, though, a little bit by the OECD. Okay. Thank you very much, Kathy. You're welcome. Fascinating stuff. Oh, not a good speaker. You are, you are. You're very good. I stammered. Or <gasps>